Hello, it's Mr Whitehead here for the maths lesson. You need a few things as usual, your practice activity from last lesson, a pen or pencil and some paper, and if you have one, a ruler, but don't worry too much if you haven't. Press pause while you get yourself sorted with all that you need, then come back and press play again when you're ready. So how did you get on with the practice task? Hold them up, let me have a look and see how you have plotted these percentages along a blank number line. Looking good. Um, I'm looking out to see anyone that had a go at the challenge, which was to represent the percentages with decimal equivalents as well. Well done, everyone. Um, let me show you how I approached it. To help me estimate the location of the percentages, I divided my number line into 10 equal parts, with each equal part representing 10%. That gave me more confidence to plot the location of the percentages, which I have marked with 8% here, 24%, 40%, 65%, 79%, and 91%. I did challenge myself and represented those percentages with their decimal and fraction equivalents. Take a look. <clears throat> and what do you think? Are you happy with those? Ah, which would you change? Good spots. 8%, 8 percent, 8 hundredths, I've represented with 0 0.8, which is 8 tenths, 80 hundredths. That needs to change. Any others? Good, 40%, 40 hundredths, correct, but 0 0.04 would be 4 hundredths, 4%. So those two would change, and then those equivalents would be correct. Well done, everyone, for the practice activity from the previous lesson. Let's move on with the learning for this lesson. If in the previous lesson we were converting percentages to decimals and fractions with denominators of 100, in this lesson we'll be converting percentages to decimals and fractions with denominators other than 100. However, let's start by connecting the new learning back to what we already know. Which value is missing? You need to press pause and write it down, please do, but otherwise call it out to me. Which value is missing from that fraction? On three, call it out. One, two, three. Good, 80. 80% 80 is equivalent to 80 hundredths. You say it. 80% is equivalent to 80 hundredths. Say it again. Good. Ah. What value is missing now? Notice what's changed with the denominator. It's no longer 100. However, this new fraction must still be equivalent to 80% and 80 hundredths. Um, press pause. Have a go at working out the missing value. Come back when you're ready to tell me. Press pause now. Are you ready? Which value is missing on three? One, two, three. Four, four fifths. How did you work that out? Show me if you've got any drawings, please, or anything written down. Hold up your paper, let me take a look. Good. You've noticed that the numerator and denominator can both be divided by 20. 80 divided by 20, 100 divided by 20. And by doing that, you've preserved the value of the fraction. The value of 4 fifths is equivalent to the value of 80 hundredths and 80%. Let's look at what that means. I've got two number lines for you. The first one divided into 10 equal parts. Each equal part represents 10 because the whole line represents 100. 100 divided by 10 is equal to 10. How about the second number line? What does each part represent? The whole line represents 1. We divide into 5 equal parts, so each equal part represents 1 fifth. Okay, so where do we plot um, 80? Good. Now with your finger, just hover over your screen. Where would you plot 4 fifths? Good. 
Now notice, the lengths of the line are the same, they're equivalent. Where we plot 80, where we plot 4 fifths, is in the same location. 4 fifths and 80% or 80 hundredths are equal. Next one, still a denominator of hundreds. I think you can probably just call out the missing numerator. Call it out to me on three. One, two, three. Good, 45, 45 hundredths, okay. Now, which value is missing? Again, press pause. Um, perhaps have a think about a number line, like I did. Once you've found the value, think about how you might represent that new fraction and 45% on two number lines to show that they're equivalent. So push yourself to that if you can, but certainly work out the missing value and think about how you found that value. Press pause, come back when you're ready. Ready? Which value is missing? Call it out on three. One, two, three. Good, nine. How did you find that missing value? This time, the numerator and denominator can both be divided by five to preserve the value of the fraction. 45 divided by five is equal to nine, and 100 divided by five is equal to 20. Number lines, hold up your paper. Let me look at how any of you, if you did, how any of you represented this on number lines. Good, and this is why I said you might want a ruler to help you keep those lines neat. Um, here are mine. First line divided into 10 equal parts. The whole is worth 100. Each equal part is worth 10, 10% this time. And the second one, ah, representing one, also divided into 10 equal parts. So what does each equal part represent? One ten. So to help me um, explain and, and reason as to how 45 hundredths and 9 twentieths are equal, I thought about 50%. Um, so I can think about 45% and 9 twentieths as well being equal. I thought about 50% halfway along that line, and I thought about 10 twentieths. Then I thought, well, 45% is a bit less than 50%, and 9 twentieths is a bit less than 10 twentieths. So it was seeming to make sense that they would be equivalent. Then I marked them on, 45% and 9 twentieths, and marked at the same location along those two lines. Um, so each of those, all three of those in fact, 45%, 45 hundredths and 9 twentieths are equivalent. Next one, what do you notice is different here compared to the previous? The denominator is now not 100, it's 25. Which numerator is missing? What is the missing value? Press pause and have a go at working out the missing value. Come back when you're ready to think about how we have found that value. Press pause, come back in a moment. Are you ready? Um, for this problem, tip for you, suggestion, connect this back to what you already know about percentages and fractions with denominators of 100. That missing value over the hundredths we can really quickly fill in 12. Once we've done that, we can work from 12 hundredths to something 20 fifths. Um, which value did you find was missing? And how did you find that value was missing? By dividing by four. You've noticed that the numerator and denominator can both be divided by four to help you find the missing value of 3 25ths. So my sentence is changing a little bit now. In order to convert a percentage to a fraction, first convert it to a fraction with a denominator of 100. Can you say that please on three? One, two, three. First convert it to a fraction, Denom 100. Good, good work. Keep that sentence in your mind, particularly for the practice activity that I leave you with in a little while.
Before I leave you with that task, let's do a little bit of counting and connecting um, percentages, decimals and fractions. So first of all, from what you can see on the screen here, I'd just like you to count in hundreds from zero. Ready? Let's do that together. From zero. One, two, three. Zero. Ten hundreds. Twenty hundreds. Thirty hundreds. Sixty hundreds. Seventy hundreds. What did you say there at the end? One? Or did you say something different? Hundred hundreds, which of course is equivalent to one. This time, count in tenths. Are you ready? Same again on three. One, two, three, zero, one tenth, two tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, ten tenths. Did you not say ten tenths? What did you say? What? Of course, one. One ten tenths are equivalent. What did you say at five tenths? Did you say five tenths? Did anyone say anything different? One half. Five tenths is equal to one half. We could have said that. Um, next, I'm going to hide either some percentages or fractions, and I want you to tell me the equivalent. So here I've hidden the fractions. I've left you with 90%. Can you tell me what that is equal to as a fraction? Tell me. And tell me another fraction. Good. We could say 90 hundredths. We could say 9 tenths from the options on the number lines here. Next one. OK, so quickly, tell me the percentage that's missing. 40%. Good. Tell me the tenths equivalent to 60%. And the hundredths? Good, six tenths, sixty hundredths. Um, how about now? Tell me the percentage that's missing. Ten percent. Good. Trying to keep it pacey still. What is sixty hundredths as a percentage? Call it out on three. One, two, three. Sixty percent. Good. Tell me this as a fraction on three. One, two, three. Eight tenths. 80 hundredths, either, both are equivalent to 80%. Um, what's this as a percentage on three? One, two, three. 7%? No? 70%. Could I say 7%? No. 7 tenths is equal to 70 hundredths is equal to 70%. Really important there. Um, and how about this as a fraction? Oh, a couple of options, I wonder. On three. One, two, three. Oh, say that again. Say that again. I need to listen carefully. One, two, three. I heard half. I heard five tenths. I heard fifty hundredths. And of course, there are other equivalents, but thinking about tenths and hundredths, um, and then I'll let that half in there as well. That's okay. Uh, let's think now then about those connections. 10%, 1 tenth, 0 0.1. We know they're all equivalent, and we can see that image there that represents each of them. That 100 square has 10 squares coloured in. Therefore, 0 0.1 of the square is shaded. 1 tenth of the square is shaded. 10% of the square is shaded. And it continues as we're moving down. Tell me the percentage that's shaded on this one. Good. Tell me the decimal shaded on this one. And the fraction on this one. Good. Um, tell me the percentage. Tell me the decimal. Tell me the fraction. We can describe the amount shaded in three different ways. 50%, 5 tenths, 0 0.5. We could say 50 hundredths as well, of course. Um, and so on. It continues through each of these up until here. In the final hundred square, what percentage is shaded? What fraction is shaded? 
And what decimal? One. Ten tenths is equal to one. We would say one, um, we would say ten tenths, we would say 100%. I want us now to think, okay, yes, that square divided into 100 equal parts, we could shade in 10 of them and then any multiple of 10 of them to match those decimals, fractions and percentages on the screen. But what if I showed you this vertical um, rectangle divided into 10 equal parts? How could I represent 10%, 1 tenth, 0 0.1 on this new shape? Tell me. I could shade in one of those 10 equal parts. That represents 10%. It represents 0 0.1. It represents 1 tenth. So how many for the next line for 20%? Of course, two. If I now say the next percentage, could you tell me the next fraction? 30%? Three tenths. Good. And carry on. 40%. 50%. Good. Now carry on as decimals. So if I say the percentage, could you say the decimal that's then represented? 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, and 1. Notice that when we use a shape divided into 100 equal parts, compared to a shape divided into 10 equal parts, we can represent the same fraction, the same percentage, the same decimal, but it will be with a different number of parts shaded in. So to the left, how many parts have we shaded in to represent 10%? 10, 10 of them. To the right, how many parts are shaded? One. Which percentage does it represent? 10%. They both show 10%, but they are representing a different number of equal parts shaded because the size overall of the holes are different. I'm going to leave you with your practice activity that your teacher will review it with you at the start of the next lesson. As I said earlier in this lesson, Practice activity is all around using this sentence to help you find missing numerators, particularly when, like in number three and four, the denominator is not 100. Uh, and of course, there's a challenge for you if you are ready for it. Well done for your hard work in this lesson, connecting fractions, decimals and percentages and converting from a percentage to a fraction with a denominator that is not 100. See you again soon and well done for your lesson today.